but it seems like just yesterday we had to update our WordPress powered websites to 4.9.3. Well, actually it was just yesterday and now just 24 hours later we have another update to 4.9.4 .4. so why is there another update within just 24 hours of the previous one well while 4.9.3 addressed 34 bugs and improved some of the performance and some of the way you interact with wordpress with the customizer and some other features another bug was introduced and this one made automatically updating to future version to wordpress not possible at least not automatically so is this a major concern and is this a major security issue the answer is no what this does mean is that we just have to go in and manually update our wordpress websites to the most current version so that way we can get automatic updates in future versions so i'm going to show you some information about what exactly changed within wordpress itself and then if you're really curious i'll actually show you the code that introduced the bug from 4.9.3 and how it was addressed in 4.9.4 .4. so now let's jump on the computer and let's check that out all right so as we see here this was the announcement of wordpress 4.9.3 which was a maintenance release this update was available on february 5th 2018 and it addressed 34 bugs in 4.9 it included fixes for the customizer chain sets the widgets visual editor and added support for php 7.2 so this was the announcement right here but immediately after about 24 hours later they released another update which is obviously WordPress 4.9.4. .4. Now this one only addressed one bug specifically within 4.9.3. And they provide a lot more information over what actually happened in this article right here. So it gives you some basic information about the technical details of what happened within the 4.9.3 release itself. As you can see over here, it says that they caught the error within a couple of hours after 4.9.3 was released. Now what this bug does, it causes a PHP fatal error when WordPress attempts to update itself. So that's what causes the issues when you have automatic updates. How do you handle your updates now? Well, you just log into your WordPress website and then you update your website as you normally would. And then you'll be fine. The automatic updates will be enabled again. Now these are more technical ways of doing it. You can use WPCLI, which is the command line interface, or you can use FTP, which is file transfer protocol, or preferably SFTP for secure file transfer protocol. Or you could even just use uh, straight up PHP via the command line if you have command line access as well. Here's some more information about some of the changes. If you want to take a look at this, and these are the various branches. Now, one thing I like about WordPress is that they leave their code up online for you to review. Meaning, not only do you have access to the current version of WordPress, you also have access to every version of WordPress from previous releases. And the way to get to those is you go over here to the wordpress.org website. And if you're going to be in the download area, you go to the release archive. And there you're going to see every single version of WordPress that's been released all the way since the inception since the beginning of WordPress itself. All right, so I downloaded a couple of previous versions just so I can take a look at some of the code and see what the issue was. All right, so I have all the downloaded files over here. I downloaded the zip files and I also have them uncompressed. I'm only gonna take a look at 4.9.3. I'll also show you 4.9.2 and some of the changes that took place from that one to this one. But primarily I'm gonna focus on over here the difference between 4.9.3 and 4.9.4 .4. all right so to do that am i going to actually go through millions of lines of code the answer is obviously no we don't have enough time for that but fortunately i have a tool that allows me to analyze any changes that take place within any file or folder it's a free tool it's something that i use on a daily basis and if you're a web developer or a web designer or someone that's just curious about anything changing within your files this is a valuable tool so it's called meld merge. This is the uh, application over here. I'm gonna do a directory comparison. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, uh, for now, 4.9.3, I'm gonna drag it in over here, and then I'll take folder 4.9.4, .4, and I'll drag that in as well. I'll bring this back to the full screen, and I'll compare. This is gonna process every single file and folder within the WordPress software itself and it'll identify if there's any changes and those are the files that I'll look at. All right, so it already finished processing it. Only took a couple of seconds there. But as you can see, we have a couple of results. We have the first one over here is the about.php. And if we scroll down further, we're gonna see there's some other changes as well. You notice over here in the sidebar, 
that we have these indicators with the blue highlighted areas, that's where the changes are. So we have a change within the update.php and the version.php. So the area we're gonna focus on is update.php. So we'll double click on that. It'll open up a side-by-side -side comparison and bring us to where the changes in the code exist. So remember, this left-hand side over here is version 4.9.3 and this is version 4.9.4. Uh, so you see that they have over here, they created a variable, uh, has auto update and they assigned it the value of false. And you see it no longer exists over here on the right hand side in version 4.9.4. If we scroll down further, we have a for each loop that's going through the, um, through the array over here. We have our if conditional, everything seems to check out. Side by side, nothing's been changed until we get down here. We have an if conditional. The condition is auto update. And if it's equal to offer, which we see over here, the offer as offer key and value. And if the offer's response, response is right here in the array, then it's gonna set has auto update to true. You see that code does not exist on this side. If we scroll down further, we get some more information of why they did this. The goal is to make sure that they don't have to have too many API calls. So what they did is they removed this code over here or they refactored it. So they have this uh, comment over here, trigger background updates if running non-interactively and we run called from the update handler. So that stays the same except for the refactored code here. So they have the if conditional doing cron and has auto update, which they tried to set over here and is not doing action, may, WP may be auto update. So what's changed is on this side, they're only checking for the doing cron job and not doing the action of WP maybe auto update. So they're not doing the uh, check for the has auto update, which doesn't exist on the new version over here. Then they remove this section over here. If find core auto update, do action, WP maybe auto update. So this is where the error was introduced. What's great is that they found it very quickly and they released an update very fast. All right, so that's pretty much it for this file over here. That's the change that took place. Now, did anything else change within version 4.9.4? We did see that uh, they had a change over here in the version, but that's just the actual version number, so that's nothing. If we scroll back up, we saw the about.php, and I'll show you that because that is technically a change as well, but it's nothing major over here. So you see they added this code over here that didn't exist in the previous version. But this is not a major factor in terms of what took place with the, um, with the auto update functionality. The main area to focus on is that update.php file right here. All right, so taking a look at it again, if you need to research what any of this stuff does, you could just go to php.net and you can look up each of the functions or how conditional statements work or how for each loops work and even how the array intersect keywords, array map, array flow keys, and some of this other information. Some of this you'll be able to find on php.net. The rest of the information you'll be able to find on the WordPress codex or in the developer.wordpress.org manual itself because they have information about every function, method, and class that WordPress includes. Now, what does a normal update look like? So let's take a look at that. All right, so we'll do another comparison over here. I'm gonna bring this down again. We'll do another directory comparison. We'll look at 4.9.2 versus 4.9.4. Or we could just do it versus 4.9.3. And we could make this um, a three-way comparison. Compare all. It'll process them all side by side. And it's done. As you can see now, we have all these other areas that have changed information in terms of the files and the folders that have been modified from version 4.9.2 to version 4.9.3 and 4.9.4. This is how you really get to understand how WordPress works itself from the core aspect. You should never modify the code itself, but you learn how to either develop WordPress themes by understanding the core or how to develop WordPress plugins. Literally, all the information is right there for you to take a look at. As you can see, we have some changes over here. Now I'm not gonna go through all of these files because that would take forever and that's not the purpose of this um, video. The purpose is just to remind you to update to 4.9.4, but to show you what a normal update looks like. There's a lot of work that goes into WordPress itself. It's not a small system. It's a very robust platform. It's a content management system. 
that gives you the ability to have a very powerful and fully functional website that can compete with literally any Fortune 500 company website out there. And to be honest with you, a lot of Fortune 500 companies use WordPress because of the fact that it does provide you with a lot of features that you would normally find in premium type solutions. But you can see in the highlighted areas what has been changed. All right, so that's the latest with WordPress 4.9.4. It's a maintenance release for the maintenance release that just happened 24 hours ago. And it addresses a bug that prevents you from updating WordPress to future versions itself. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn how to code a WordPress theme, take a look at my WWP training theme video. I show you step by step how to code a theme that you could use for your website, for your clients' websites or a theme that you want to sell to the public. All right, again, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you update your WordPress website ASAP. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.